morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So this is our second video for our new chapter, and the title of the chap chapter is Work With What You Got, and it's one of the chapters where we learn about ecology, okay? So in this video, I just want to remind us that for this whole chapter, for the whole chapter we, we're calling Work With What You Got, we need to be always focused on these two problems. These are, these are the questions we should be asking ourselves so we know why this chapter is important. And the questions are, how does our environment influence survival? So how do we in our environment live a life that makes us able to survive? Are there things in our life that make us more stressed out? Are there things we do in life that help us? Is there things in our environment helping? Is there things in our environment harming? All of this, whether it's really important, like enough food in your environment, or maybe it's just uh, stress from a girlfriend or family, whatever, um, all of these things do influence how you feel. They influence your health and your survival. Also, our problem is what's going on in our Burbank environment. So always thinking about local, always thinking about our county, Los Angeles, and always thinking about our city and what's happening in our environment being aware of the things that are around us that affect us and being also aware of things we do that affect our environment because it goes both ways. Our environment causes things in our bodies and we cause things to the environment. So it's back and forth. For example, this right here shows how things go between people or other living things and the environment. This is about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide moves between water and out of water into the atmosphere or the air. Carbon dioxide is released from forest fires. So carbon dioxide, a type of gas, yeah. If we cause a fire, it affects the environment. Also, if there's smoke in the environment, it affects us, like this farmer. This farmer is, is working in his field, but he's breathing in smoke, so the environment's affecting him. He's driving a tractor. The tractor releases carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide goes into our atmosphere. So he's causing carbon dioxide to go into the air by his tractor. He's also breathing carbon dioxide out. Plus, the environment's affecting him, the farmer. Or this, the, the, the bird. This bird is releasing carbon dioxide into the air but also the fire is probably affecting the, the bird. So different things in our environment affect us and we affect the environment. And this example is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the air we breathe. It's just one example of how things in our environment affect us and vice versa. All right, here's some clips of different ways we affect the environment. So ways humans do. You can see this, uh, the pollution. You can see the air smog, like in Los Angeles, uh, from the cars, you know, and this is another country, but the air pollution from the vehicles. But we affect our cities, yeah. Wow, that's pretty scary and sad. Yikes. Litter. Lots of trash. Oh, the elephant poaching. So different ways we affect the environment. Here's the factories pumping out the steam and different gases into the atmosphere. Here's ways the environment affects us. Look, air pollution gets into our lungs, right? Um, different gases in the air can lead to all kinds of effects on the brain. And nerve damage. Look, this is kind of scary. Different things in the air, if the air is too polluted, or if there's things that are at too high toxic levels in the air, they can also affect our organs. If uh, water, whatever's in our water can affect us, maybe there's things living in the water that are bad for us. Especially if you go into the mountains and drink a stream water, you might get parasites. Or maybe there's water pollution like chemicals. If the soil is, has anything toxic in it, when we eat the food that grows in the dirt, we might affect our organs also. So the environment also affects us in kind of scary ways. And you think about it more the older you get. So as we go week to week, and as we're still in this chapter, we'll keep asking ourselves about these problems. So we focus on important things. Let's go to slide six. All right, slide six is about biotic variables. So you learned from last uh, notes that biotic variables are anything alive. So anything that affects us that are alive. Biotic variables. Now let's look at, we have a data table here and it's about 
violence that happens within the family. So violence between siblings, brothers, sisters, or violence between mom, dad, or mom and child, or dad and child. It says, according to data, which age group experienced the most violence? This would be the number. So whichever age group here had the highest number of violent activities. And you can see it's age 13 to 15. So this is what you need to do. In your notebook, write slide six. So write slide six in your notebook. And then write number one. And your answer is age 13 to 15. There was 6,000 students claiming violence from their home. And that's the biggest. So they, they experienced the highest level of violence according to reports. So 13 to 15 year olds. Number two, it says make a claim about violence among students in Mexico based on the data. So all of these students are from Mexico. So they're Mexican students from the country Mexico. We need to look at, you need to look at something here and say something about what you learned. All right, to continue, it says make a claim about violence among students in Mexico based on the data. So it says, so in your notebook, you can write this if you want help. So write this if you like. So pause the video. It says, based on data, comma, the blank variable. So choose a variable here. A certain age, a certain gender, men or women, a certain school level, or choose a certain residence, whether they live in urban or rural. Urban means city. Rural means country, uh, out like nature areas where people farm and less cities. So this is cities, this is not cities. Based on the data, the blank variable showed how many. So choose one of these and then tell me about how many students experienced violence. So count the number for that. So for us, we said age 13 to 15 had 6,005 kids experience violence. You choose a different one and then tell me, what does it say? Students experienced what? So based on the one you chose, what does it say? Tell me something about the data that you see. Just describe what you've learned from the variable you chose and how many kids are there. Third, it says identify which step on procedure sheets includes collecting data. Ah, so let me help you. So right here where it says science problem solving strategies, page 36, you need to turn briefly to page 36. So turn to page 36, and on this page, you will find out which step on that paper. So step one, step two, or step three, or four, do you collect data? Just like this is data, which step on the science strategies would you collect data? And then answer your answer here. What step? Blank step. So turn to page 36 and find out which, which step involves collecting data. And then write it as your answer. All right, this is slide seven. And you need to write down in your notebook slide seven. And then write down the definition, abiotic variables. Abiotic variables are non-life variables or the non-living parts of an organism's environment. So non-living things. That affect you. So it's non-living things that affect you or impact your life. An example could be cell phone. An example could be oxygen. An example could be the sun. Maybe you get a sunburn. All of those things are non-living or non-life and they affect you and they come from your environment. All right, once you write down this definition, proceed to answer these questions. So let's look. So question one, so in your notebook, write question one under the definition here. Question one, it says determine or decide, look at this graph, and it says what is the abiotic variable in the graph? There's two variables. You have photosynthesis and you have temperature. Which one of these is not life or has nothing to do with something living? You have photosynthesis, that's what plants do. So plants use uh, sunlight for food. And you have temperature. Which one of these variables are non-living or has to do with uh, no life? It's not anything to do with something alive. That's the abiotic, the non-living thing. So which one of these has nothing to do with life? And then write it. 
you write the abiotic variable equals, right? So you just write abiotic variable equals blank. Just choose the one you think it is. Next it says identify the biotic variable in the graph. So the other one you didn't choose is going to be the biotic. So which one of these has more to do with life? Is temperature life or is photosynthesis in plants life? So whichever one you think is biotic, you write biotic equals or biotic variable equals. All right, just like number two, you wrote biotic variable equals. All right, question three in your notebook. Remember, you're writing your answers to these questions in your notebook. This is slide seven. It says number three, it says photosynthesis drops after 30 degrees Celsius. So this plant, right, rate of photosynthesis, right? The higher these dots, the more photosynthesis happens. So at the temperature of 30 degrees, you see there's a lot of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis increases. As the temperature increases, the amount the plant uh, is making energy increases too, or photosynthesis goes up, right? High. And then after 30 degrees, it goes down. After 30 degrees, photosynthesis goes to zero. So after 30 degrees, the plant no longer makes food. It's no longer doing photosynthesis. Make a hypothesis. Why do you think? Why do you think after 30, why do you think the plants stop making photosynthesis or making energy? Explain why. For number three, you say hypothesis equals at 30 degrees Celsius, photosynthesis dropped because and what do you think? It's, uh, you're fine, anything, but why, how could heat, how could increasing the heat or how could increasing temperature affect photosynthesis? So you just come up with a reason. Think for yourself. I think the plant stopped making food or photosynthesizing at 30 degrees because blank. Make, uh, come up with something creative. Why do you think? What do you think happened to the plant? And then you write in the blank here. Okay, what's the independent variable? Aha. So this is the last question. For question four in your notebook, the independent variable equals what? You have photosynthesis and temperature. What causes what? Does temperature cause photosynthesis to be different or does photosynthesis change the temperature? Which one do you think causes the other? Think about it. So looking at the graph, you have to decide which one of these variables do you think is the independent variable? Let's look at the thing I made, this right here. It says independent is either the temperature or photosynthesis. You have to decide which one do you think is the independent variable. You have to ask, which one of these red sentences makes more sense? You have sentence one or you have sentence two. Which do you think sounds better? Does temperature cause photosynthesis to change? So does the temperature here cause photosynthesis to change? If you think yes, then you say the temperature is the independent variable. Or do you think photosynthesis causes temperature to change? So do you think that photosynthesis, the plants, make temperature different? Based on what you think, decide which one you think the independent variable is. So if you like sentence one, you say temperature is the independent variable, and it causes photosynthesis to change. So Whatever temperature it is, photosynthesis increases or decreases, or do you think temperature, or sorry, or do you think photosynthesis is the independent and it causes temperatures to change? So do you think the plants cause temperatures around us? If you think so, then two would be your choice and you would say photosynthesis is the independent variable. All right, in your notebook, make your choice and explain why you chose it. So give an explanation for what you chose. All right, we have slide nine so in your notebook write slide nine it says in your journal it says you have a blank variable for your team's independent variable so in our eco cups sorry about that so in our eco cups is your variable biotic is it a living independent variable or is your variable abiotic or non-living so if you had cigarettes that would be non-living if you have uh let's see abuse would be biotic because abuse is caused by living things. All right, please write this sentence and fill in the blank. All right, so you have an abiotic or biotic. Choose the one you think your independent variable is, and then list what it is here. So copy this down and fill in the blanks properly. So you have an abiotic or biotic. 
and what it is for your team. What's your team's independent variable? Fill in the blank right there.